for grabs today. An essential research-based guide for anyone coping with cancer. Complementary therapies for cancer. What works, what doesn't, and how to tell the difference. Being research-based, this is very important because so many people become vulnerable, anxious, and desperate and can get fleeced because there are shysters out there of the lowest possible order. Sean Holt is the author. Uh, if, you, if you want the book, just email through the website, say Sean Holt, book or cancer book, please. Just make it clear. Sean, it is one of the lowest forms of life, those that prey on the vulnerable and anxious for their own profit and fleece people. Yes, it is. Uh, you know, it's a very uh, vulnerable time as well. So, I mean, I'm reasonably generous in the book in that I make the comment that I think a lot of people, like, like you know, your homeopaths or those offering reflexology, are probably well-meaning. You know, I don't think they're out to deliberately steal people's money. No. I think they're probably well-meaning, but wrong. Don't, you know, and I think they should be offering other things that do help. Uh, but there are, of course, also uh, many programs of pe- where people really do prey on people with cancer and, and fleece them. Yeah. yeah. Most importantly, um, I, I, you need to flag those. How do you, how do you how do people tell what what are the shysters? Are there some common ingredients, things to look for? Sure. Look, I mean that's why I put the book together. I think it's almost impossible. Certainly, I was looking for a resource and I couldn't find one. And I mean, I'm looking. I've had it. You know, I've spent a couple of years on this. I've been through all the papers. And I've got a lot of training in research. So, you know, for me, it was possible. But I think for anyone else, it'd be virtually impossible because unless you've got that training access to papers, uh, how would you know? Most people get their information from the Internet, you know, which is the Wild West of information. Probably 99% of it is nonsense. And I just think for your, for your average person, getting good information of which ones work and which ones don't, I think is impossible. Without any scientific background a lot of sort of scientific talk can convince people yeah and we call that pseudoscience and it's very very convincing and a lot of uh, uh, you know unscrupulous people will use that but look even doctors and i've been you know, in a lot of talks recently to cancer doctors and they don't know about the complementary side of things you know yeah. do- doctors aren't trained what i'm delighted to say is that doctors do want to know uh, and they want to know which ones have the good research. But I talked to a graduate who, who just finished, been through medical school, and in the whole five years, she had half a day on complementary therapies, which is half a day more than I had when I went through the system. Wow. So, yeah, so I've done, you know, tried to do my bit by putting a book together. The one I notice it's carefully put language wise complementary therapies for cancer because yeah. uh, a lot of people think, oh, it's a cure. No, this is a therapy. You're talk- talking about things that can. Uh, ameliorate rather than claim a cure. Precisely, and that's why the nomenclature is so important and it is confusing. So complementary therapies means you take them in addition to your treatment from your hospital as opposed to alternative where you stop your your, your traditional medical treatments and just go down uh, the natural route. Very, very important. Because, look, I mean, over half of cancers can be cured now. Uh, which is great, and that's going to increase with increasing medical research. None of these complementary therapies will cure a person at all, but what they, some of them can do, and really, really effective, is to reduce symptoms and help with quality of life. Do you cover in this book those that do claim to be able to cure the infamous flights to Mexico? Yeah, I've got a section on, on, on Mexico, and, you know, uh, for, for, for various reasons, that's where a lot of this uh, quackery occurs. And, you know, we've had some high-profile cases of people from New Zealand who've left the treatment and gone there. Uh, it almost always ends badly. Uh, these cures do not exist. A lot of people from the U.S. will cross the border and, and go, go to the, the southwest border there to these Mexican clinics. They can be very dangerous therapies. Uh, or at the very least, people will be wasting their precious time and their precious money. Yeah, it's so difficult when people are so desperate... No, isn't it? To, it, it, to it any is. any sign of hope, you, people will think, well, what if we try it and it does work? It's a huge incentive for people to give these things a go. Oh, it is. And look, I absolutely agree with that. I'm certainly, if I was in that situation, I'd want to try absolutely everything. I'd want to research everything. Um, but in, around half of people with cancer will try complementary therapies and just about everyone else in the other half will have a good think about them. And those that do take them, uh, a quarter will use at least seven therapies. 
So that says it all. And, mm. you know, and good on them. They're trying things. So what I've tried to do is steer people towards the ones that work and away from the ones that don't. Okay. Yeah. You'd be happy to take some calls. We don't have that much time, but it's a great opportunity. I think some people uh, may have a few questions. We'll see. Sure Is thing, yeah. Great. Here's the number, 0800 723 465. Avail yourself of Professor Sean Holt's research. He's done the work. You can ask the question. He's done it. 0800 723 465. Anything to do with complementary therapies for cancer, those that are bogus, those that work. You may just... Uh, be considering one or the other, whether it be your friend or someone closer. Ask. Professor Sean Holt, 0800 723 465. Sean, don't go anywhere. I'm here. We'll be back very shortly. Great.